All right, hello, MUCT112L uh, class. This is your remote lecture for week eight. For week eight. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Let's get um, into some uh, warm up. We're going to spend a little time in the Berkowitz book, just a little bit. This is actually going to be a relatively um, uh, a short uh, remote lecture this week. All right, um, let me go get C major off of the piano. We're going to deal with uh, just one new concept, a new chord we're going to talk about today. There is our C major. All right, let's do major mode. Two, three, four. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Sorry, there's some gnats and flies flying around here. Let's do harmonic minor, ready, go. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, le, ti, do, ti, le, sol, fa, mi, re, do. And natural minor, ready, go. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, le, te, do, te, le, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Good. Now, before uh, we begin, Actually, um, go ahead and get your Berkowitz books out and turn uh, to page 33. Page 33 in your Berkowitz book. On page 33, we'll start at the bottom of the page. This is where we ended. Um, we ended on Friday of week 7. Uh, look at number 149, the last one on the page. And there's a little a paragraph there talking about the 2 chord. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the two chord, and then we'll do a pair of uh, the, the paired set that they have here. All right, so the two chord is the most common predominant chord, meaning the, the chord that uh, uh, precedes uh, the dominant or the five uh, function. Okay, so we've already uh, talked about outlining one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Of course, these have all been major. Uh, this will, uh, and then in minor, they are uh, you know, min uh, minor mode, the one is minor, the four is minor, and the five is uh, minor or major, though we have always made it major by it raising the seventh scale degree. Okay, the two chord is minor in the major mode and in the minor mode it is diminished. So we finally have a diminished chord that we're going to outline here. Um, as far as tendency tones are concerned, the one chord uh, we know of course is very important because it has do in it. The five chord was very important because it had two uh, very important syllables, sol and t. The two chord in major is uh, of course an important chord because of its predominant function. It's a uh, place usually before five, but it has re, fa, and la. No. Re, fa, la, do, if that is our key, re, fa, la. And those, um, uh, those three pitches are, are important, fa especially, but, uh, but not as important as do, ti, and sol. When we were talking about the one chord and the five chord. So there's not any really, really strong motion uh, implied in one of these three pitches. However, this is a little bit different in the diminished two chord from minor. Okay. Do, 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 re, fa, le, re, fa, le. If you remember from the old secrets of the scales, remember that le, especially in harmonic minor mode, natural minor mode, but especially harmonic minor mode, le has a tendency tone. It has a tendency to move downward because that is the direction of the half step. Le, sol, le, sol. So there is somewhat of a tendency of le to move down to sol. So similar to the tendency of fa to go down to mi in the major mode. But a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger in the minor mode from le to sol. Not as strong as the tendency, of course, of ti to do. That is the strongest tendency that we have. But this one downward. So if you were in the, um, even the descending Melodic minor, the natural minor, or the harmonic minor. Le, sol. There's a tendency for that one to move down, which makes sense since we said that the two chord 
is predominant, meaning it comes before the five. Le, sol, and of course sol is the root of the five chord. So this is a potentially very strong motion because you have a half step relationship here, and then of course five to one, the half step relationship between T and Do. I bring this up because you may see uh, that in minor mode when the, the two chord is outlined, there will be somewhat of a tendency uh, often for Le to move to Sol. Knowing that, of course, knowing the harmonic reason behind that will help you with reading the melodies. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and sing a couple of examples. Um, number 149 on page 33 and then the next one, uh, 150 on page 34. Let me roll C major again. Me is the first syllable in number 149. Notice they give you accents on those downbeats. You should do them. All right, this is a relatively long example, example of 16 bars, I believe. Let's give it a try. Um, they give you a harmonic analysis there so you know where the two chord is being outlined. Here we go. One and two and three. Mi, Fa, Sol, Sol, La, Fa, Re, Sol, Fa, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Fa, Re, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Sol, La, Fa, Re, La so fa mi re do re fa la so fa mi re do. Okay, so you see that tendency that they're bringing out here of two to go directly to five. Okay, turn the page over, please, and let's try number one hundred and fifty, which is the same melodic contour but in C melodic minor. Do, re, me. Let's go ahead and sing C melodic minor together before we do it. Ready? Go. Do, re, me, fa, sol, la, ti, do, te, le, sol, fa, me, re, do, me. That's our first note. Here we go. One and two and three. Me, fa, sol, sol, le. When I was pointing down just now, that was to illustrate that lay to soul relationship we just talked about. All right, that's enough for the Berkowitz for now. Uh, on Friday, we'll uh, do a number of other examples um, of, of, of paired two chord outlines. Let's go to the Kazez book. Last Friday, Friday of week seven, we uh, um, introduced chapter four, getting us back into compound meter, into compound meter. So let's go to the Kazez book, page 58. 58. All right, if you're there on page 58, the Kazez rhythm reading book, we'll begin with 100, top of the page. Okay, and if we were in class together, I would ask you a little bit of a trick question with number 100, 100 asking you, what beat does it come in on? Now, if you were in 3-8 thinking this is counted in 3, it would be an easy answer, beat 3. But as you can see at the top of page 58, um, we're talking about one beat per measure. Okay, so 6-8 is often, as a compound meter treated compoundly, 6-8 is often done in 2, 
one and a, two and a, or you could think of it as a one, two, three, four, five, six. Same is true of three eight. It would be one beat. One and a, one and a, or one, two, three, one, two, three. So the answer to the question, what beat does it come in on, is a. Uh. One and a uh. comes in on the a. Uh. Notice at the very end, we are uh, conforming to the law of conservation of beats in that uh, the eighth note taken as a pickup, as an anacrusis at the beginning, is taken off of that last measure. All right, so number 100, I'm going to give you four measures in one. Four measures or four beats, which are the same thing in this case. And on that fourth one, we will come in on a. Uh. Ready? One and a uh, one and a uh, one and a uh, one. T T T T T Tiki T T Tiki T Tiki T T T T T T T T T T T T Tiki Tiki T T T T T T T T Tiki 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 T All right. Uh, 101. Next one there. Okay, this uh, dotted, dotted 8 16th 8th rhythm. The dotted 8 16th 8th rhythm that they're giving you here is important. Okay, it's similar in its importance to this rhythm out of simple meter. And remember the warning we had here is you need to subdivide carefully T, T, T. T, T, and not to swing it, T, 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 T. Okay. So in this case, um, it needs to be a very carefully subdivided as well. T, 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 T. If not carefully subdivided, it becomes T, D, 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 D. It becomes uh, swung and inaccurate. Okay, so let's make sure that we do that one. Right, it even gives you the recommended speech cue of a lazily, which is exactly the opposite of how I want you to perform it. I want you to perform it precisely, not lazily. 101. One and a two and a one and a and a two and a T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T Good. All right. Um, moving on to number one hundred and two. Make sure that you have your Kazez books opened uh, flat uh, because this uh, uh, number one hundred two uh, is part of it is on both pages, pages fifty-eight and fifty-nine. Okay. Notice that they very very helpfully in number one hundred two are beaming rests over the beats. So this is very, very helpful for you because it'll help you keep the beats together. Otherwise, look at the, uh, look at the first measure of 102, for instance. Okay. As you can see, um, almost all of them are beamed together into groups. So imagine if we did not beam them together into beat groups. This is what it would look like. That would be your first uh, measure. And looking at that, unless you were doing it in an extremely slow 9, um, this is very confusing. Even in, in a slow 9, this would be confusing. Um, it's hard to tell at first glance where, what beats are related to which. Okay, it would be easy, especially in this long string of uh, notes that are identical. Um, it would be hard to find out where you were. So, that is why. We beam things to, together, so if you are a budding young composer or arranger or writing anything, uh, this is really, really helpful. So here's beat one, beat two, beat three. Actually, I put that on the wrong side, excuse me. Okay, the same thing is true of rests if you look at the second complete measure. If you look at the second complete measure, um, and if we were to write that without beaming the rests across or beaming the notes together, we would have something like this, which again 
very, very hard to determine what belongs to what. So we not only beam notes that are in the same beat together, but also under the rests. So now it's very clear. This is the beat one group, beat two, and beat three. All right, let's do number 102. This is a 9-8, so it's done in three, a compound three, and we come in on the uh of three. Be careful, there are a number of meter changes here. We're not going to go very fast. Two measures. One and a two and a three and a one e and a and a two e and a and a three. T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T All right, and let's do the next two, 103 and 104. Lazy, leaky. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can uh, you can do this. You can either go T T T K I, or you can go T K T K I. I prefer the second as a brass player who's used to double tonguing that way. T K T K I. You can go T T T K I if you like. Just so long as you subdivide. 103. One and a two and a one e and a and a two e and a and T T T. T T T T T T T T K T K T K T K T T K T K T K T K T K T K T K T K T K T K T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T K T K T T T K T K T K T T T T T T T T T K T K T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T K T K T T T K T K T T T T K T K T T T T K T K T K T T T T All right, do that one several times if you need to. Um, that one's got a couple little uh, tricky elements in it. Okay, that's it uh, for the uh, the midweek remote lecture for week eight. We'll see you guys all on Friday in class.